ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه وبركاته عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله تبارك وتعالى واحسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار as we go back to the usul of the religion of al islam as it is incumbent upon the muslims to learn these principles before they learn that which is pertaining to the branches is that they clarify or excuse me they cleanse for that which taints which makes a person a muslim and from that is from teaching them the affairs of the monotheism of allah tabarak wa ta'ala which is called a tawhid and in the sense of the deed as we know that the majority of the muslims you will find that they have been affected by the fiqh of the siyasiyat al madhmuma wa fiqh al khawarij the majority of the muslims that they are cultivated upon that which is of involving themselves in politics dispraised politics and also likewise busy in themselves with declaring takfir on the muslim rulers as it happened to me one time with an individual maybe about 3 weeks ago as all he speaks about is that which pertaining to declaring the muslim leaders to be kuffar that's all he speaks about and then something which shows the ignorance of the individual which is what that when he said is it permissible for me to look at horoscopes which shows the jahl of the usul of his religion but you busy yourself and make a takfir on the hukam for making and declaring the muslim rules for being hukam and you committed shirk with allah tabarak wa ta'ala busy themselves of that which is of horoscopes and he asked me what if it's no benefit we are just reading it and i don't really believe it then you're wasting your time then for that reason ya ma'ash al ikhwa i say this or that which is pertaining to the affairs of tawhid which a lot of people are falling into these days and we go back to that which is of the basics from that which is from the chapter which we choose which is pertaining to that which al imam al mujaddid al shaykh rahimahullah rahmatu wasi'a wa nasallallahu an yajziyahu an yajziyahu anna wa anil muslimin khayr al jazaa wa yarfa' darajatuhu 'inda al mahdiyin wa al imam al shaykh muhammad abdul wahhab rahimahullah rahmatu wasi'a as he says in his books in kitab at tawhid which is the chapter which is bab min al shirk lubs al halqa wa tamaim that which is of the chapter which is from polytheism and from setting up partners with allah tabarak wa ta'ala is wearing that which is al halqa aw at tamaim and if you notice the shaykh he started the chapter off by using the ayah where allah tabarak wa ta'ala says in his book qul afara'aytu ma tad'una min dunillah in aradani allah bi durrin hal hunna kashifat durr aw aradani bi rahmatin hal hunna mumsikat rahmatih qul hasbi allah عليه يتوكل المتوكلون as allah tabarak wa ta'ala says in his book that allah mentions of that which is of those who committed shirk with him do you not see of those who invoke other than allah meaning that which is a dua al ibadah wa dua al masala that which is of indication a invocation of that which is asking or invoking allah tabarak wa ta'ala or that which is they call dua al ibadah wa dua al masala that which you see which you invoke other than allah which is comprehensive for both of those meanings if allah wants me to be touched by some type of evil those things are invoked other than him 
Do they, can they remove their heart? To the end of the eye where it says that if Allah wants to touch me with some type of mercy or good, are they able to give it to me? Say that Allah to put Allah put my trust. He suffices me. And upon him, I rely and put my full trust and let those who trust him rely on him to barakah with the other. Notice that he used that ayah for the chapter. How is that related to that which is relating or that which people fall into of wearing strings on their fingers, rings on their fingers, necklaces in which the intention by is what we'll talk about insha'Allah. Because a lot of people in these days think shirk that is only restricted to, to prostrate into that which is of idols, to want to bow, or to make sujood, to that which is of idols or statues, or that which is of what we think in our mind that's just mere polytheism. Polytheism can fall into a lot of different types of acts. You'll find that the Muslims, that they fall into it all around the world. For that reason, you see the ayah. He put directly in the chapter which is pertaining to the ayah and which also confirms its meaning. Is the hadith of that which is on the authority of Imran ibn Hussein. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ra'a rajulan fi yadihi halqatan min al-sufr. Faqala ma hadihi, qala min al-wahina. Qala in zi'ha, fa inna ha la taziduka illa wahnan. Fa inna ka la muta wa hiya alayk, ma aflahta abadan. Rawah al-imam Ahmad bi sanad al-la batsabih. Wa kathalika sahahu al-imam al-albani. Wa sahahu ibn Hibban. Wa kathalika al-haqa wa qarrahu al-zahabi. For that which we say, Ya Ma'ash al which is the first hadith that he put directly in the chapter, that the Prophet Sallallahu has seen a man wearing a ring. We're not saying that rings are impermissible, but the Prophet Sallallahu inquired about what was the intent behind why he, was wearing, why he was wearing that ring. He was wearing a ring on his finger, and that ring was made out of that which is a brass. And he said, what is you, why are you wearing that ring? What's the purpose? He said, it's from Wahina. Meaning it's to give me some type of cure. It's to cure me or give me some type of remedy from the sickness which is in my body. Which is called al-wahina, where it can affect that which is the muscles and likewise certain parts of the body and render it weak, severely weak. For that reason, he wore that ring in order to be what? To obtain that remedy or that cure. So it can be removed from him, some type of harm in which he is afflicted with. The Prophet ﷺ has said, Remove it, tear it off. For verily, it will never increase you except in weakness. For verily, if you was to die and it is upon you, you will never be prosperous. For a person will ask, due, due to the fact that this was his intent, is this major polytheism or is this minor polytheism? For the first thing we say, just the fact that it's mere shirk, the fact that it's just polytheism, can make one flee totally away from it. Due to the fact that it is the most despicable and the most vile act, the most vile act that one human being or any human being can commit, which is to set up partners with Allah and His worship. And notice that it did not fall to that which is of, merely just prostrating to idols other than Allah. Rather, it came to something that one was wearing. And that can also is comprehensive for what a lot of people do these days. When they build some type of house, you'll find them doing in some countries, that if you build a house, they will ask you, sacrifice that which is of an animal and put its blood all over the house in order to protect yourself from the aim or to protect yourself from the jinn. Or you will find that what they do. For example, in some countries where they'll cut off the animal's tail and they'll hang it on their car or they'll hang it on their house or even in that which they do in this country where people wear rabbit foots where they wear a rabbit's foot, or they'll wear some type of chain where the intent, or the necklace, where the intent behind it is to protect them from some type of harm, or that it gives me good luck, or it removes my bad luck, or, for example, that it protects me from the jinn, or, for example, that it what? It protects me from the ain. All of this is from setting up partners with Allah to bring with ta'ala, and it will also allow you to fall to the most worst sin that you can commit, which is of... Shirk with Allah to bring with Ta'ala. As we know the ayah where Allah to bring with Ta'ala says in his book, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَا عَمَلُكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ بَلِ اللَّهَ فَعْبَدُ كُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ As Allah to bring with Ta'ala says in his book, clarifying that shirk is the most despicable sin that one could commit. And no matter how much you prayed, and no matter how much you gave of sadaqah, 
and no matter, no matter how much you had of good manners, and no more, or no, that which you have of good deeds, that is the size of the mountain, if you fall into these type of sins, Allah has set all of your deeds on the void. If you even made hajj, if you mean umrah, if you fast in the month of Ramadan for 20 years straight, if you fall into major shirk, all of it is null and void. All of it is null and void. If you fall into major shirk, you die upon major shirk, you will be in hell forever. You will never come out. If you die upon major polytheism, you will be in hell forever, which shows the magnitude of this despicable sin of setting up polytheism with Allah. Tabarakah wa ta'ala. And for that reason, we say if a person that falls into this type of act, we break down into two types. Allah tabarakah wa ta'ala has made for us to cure ourselves of remedies, or to cure ourselves of sicknesses, excuse me, or to take or attain some type of treatment, or for example, to protect ourselves from evil, to ward off harm or to ward off that which is of evil. Allah tabarakah wa ta'ala has allowed us to attain those matters either by two ways, either by his shara', either through his religion, or he legislated it through his al-kawni al-qadri, either through his creation. That is how one protects himself from the ain or from the jinn or from evil, based upon what Allah has legislated in his religion, that which he has legislated in his book, and that which he has legislated upon the tongue of his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa where a person will read the Qur'an in order to cure himself. We have what descended and revealed to the people that which is a shifa, that which is a remedy and cure for the people. Allah has clearly shown that the Qur'an is a what? Is a remedy in which he legislated from his book. And Allah on that also what a lot of people fall into. And you will find that in a lot of Muslim countries, they write MashaAllah on their car to protect them from the Ain. Incorrect. Also, likewise, you will find that which even people do as far as hanging the Quran on their walls and their houses. The Quran was not made, it was not revealed for decoration. It was revealed for Al Amal, what Tadabur, what Tafakufi, what Amal fi, what Amal bihi. The Quran was revealed. For not to want to take it as decoration, it was revealed in order for you to contemplate and to take heed and to work by it. And even that, as we'll talk about, inshallah, even if Allah legislated for you that which is of the Quran, and also like us, that which is of those prophetic, authentic supplications, in order for one to protect himself, his heart cannot be connected with it, with that which is the Quran, meaning the Mus'haf. Or even that which is of the pages of the du'a. His heart is connected with Allah Ta'ala in all cases. Even if he reads the Qur'an to be cured by it. Even if he reads the Qur'an to protect himself. For example, of reading Surah Al-Baqarah. In order for the jinn to leave out of his home. Your heart still has to have the, co the connection. And likewise the belief and the conviction that the protection comes from Allah directly. And it does not come from that which Allah made as a suburb, as a reason to protect yourself. As we'll talk about, insha'Allah, bi'idhillah. So the first thing we say, number one, if a person believes in bad luck or he wears that which is a rabbit's tail, and even what the Muslims do by wearing talismans, in it if that which is of or contains ayat of the Qur'an, also that which is incorrect, that is also a shaitan trick in order to get you to fall into shirk. And at least you can fall into bid'ah. Because none of the salaf used to what? Wear the talisman of the Qur'an around their neck in order to use it as a way to protect themselves. For that reason, ya ma'ash al-ikhwa, we say, number one. Number one, if a person falls into these acts, is he falling into major polytheism or minor? As Sheikh Muhammad al-Salih al-Uthaymi, rahimahullah, and other than, from, other than him from the ulama, mentioned that, number one, if the person believes, ultimately, that these things conduct and can harm you or affect you totally by itself without Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, it is major polytheism. You have nullified your Islam. Your Islam now is null and void. And this is the reason why I'm talking about these affairs because these are the most dangerous. 
Shirk and bid'ah is the most dangerous in which the people can fall into. Shirk can render you in hell forever. There's no shafa'ah for you, for those who die upon major shirk. And likewise, if the person believes that these things is a reason to protect himself, the rabbit's foot, or wearing that necklace, that I wear this necklace because my grandmother handed it to me because it gave her good luck, so it gives me good luck in my life. Or this, this wrist, or this type of watch, or this type of necklace, or this, excuse me, this type of wristband, my sister wore it, it gave her good luck, I'm wearing this, so likewise it will bring me good luck in my life. If you do that, that is a satanic trick to fall you into, make you fall to polytheism with Allah. For that reason we say, also likewise, if a person has the belief that this thing is a reason to protect himself, or to attain some type of good, or to remove some type of harm, then if he believes the protection comes from Allah, but Allah made it a reason, then it is minor polytheism. But a person has to take in consideration, it's still called shirk. And for that reason, it's still, whether or not it is minor or major, it's incumbent upon one to stay far away from it due to the fact it is the most detested and hated thing to Allah. Ta'ala. And he hates polytheism and the whole Qur'an was revealed in order to make war with polytheism. The whole Qur'an is in tawheed of Allah. Ta'ala, which we'll give another khutbah and explain it inshallah bidillah. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك الحق المبين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد ولد آدم أجمعين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد for that reason we say that Allah Taala has made two ways to protect ourselves and likewise cure ourselves. It is either in the religion in which Allah has informed in the shara' or that which He had made as al-kawni al-qadri, that which He made from His creation, meaning that which is of those known medicines and remedies and those herbs in which by experience and people using it know that in it it is a cure and a remedy. Those are the only ways that one cures himself or uses some type of remedy to protect himself, which is either in the shara' by that which is reading the Qur'an, or likewise, using those authentic supplications which has been affirmed upon the Prophet wasallam. That is a way to protect yourself from the ayn and the jinn and ward off all those other type of harms. But still at the same time, ya ma'ashal ikhwa, these are the asbab, these are the reasons and the means and we know that Allah رَبَطَ الْأَسْبَابِ مُسَبَّبَاتِهَا That everything that Allah brings about, or something that is caused, or what comes as a result of it, He made for it a reason. For that which is of children, what comes, as, what's the reason? Is marriage. And two couples coming together, which comes as a result of it, that child. The sabab is the nikah. The musabab is the walad. That which is of. For example, a person getting a job, he attains it by doing the sabab. The sabab is to look, go out, fill out the application, put in and show your credentials, ask the people, go around. That's the asbab. The musabab is inshallah, Allah give you tawfiq and he will give you that job. And he will allow that employer and put in his heart to hire you. But a person does not tie, even though we've been commanded to do the asbab, our hearts are not connected with the asbab. Our hearts are connected with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And that's even with the supplications that we make and the Qur'an that we read in order to attain these type, this type of protection or to ward off those evils or that type of, or attract that type of benefit. All of it has to be in a legislative manner, either from the Qur'an and Sunnah, but however our heart is tied with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala because all of the remedies that we take and the medicines that we take, and the herbs that we take, the person has to have the i'tiqad that is Allah that's curing you. Because if Allah wanted, He will allow the remedies and the medicine you take not to have any effect. 
And also likewise, those supplications that you make, those prophetic supplications, authentic supplications, that we invoke Allah in order to attain some type of good or ward off some type of harm, still, that is the asbab. That is the reasons to protect yourself what has been legislated. But however, ya ma'ashul ikhwah, your heart still has to be tied with Allah to barakah wa ta'ala. Because all of the benefits comes directly from Him. Not from anyone He created or anything He created. From that which is from the creation or anything that's not created, such as the Qur'an. And likewise, that comes in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. For that reason we say, ya ma'ashul ikhwah. The next hadith of the Prophet wasallam. Also likewise where he said, مَن تَعَلَّقَ تَمِيمَةً فَلَا أَتَمَ اللَّهُ لَهُ وَمَن تَعَلَّقَ وَدَعَةً فَلَا وَدَعَ اللَّهُ لَهُ وَفِي رِوَايَ وَمَن تَعَلَّقَ شَيْئًا وُكِلَ إِلَيْهِ As the Prophet ﷺ had also mentioned, he said, talking about this affair of hanging those talismans or those incantations, and you'll find that a lot of Muslims do to their ignorance, they even hang the Qur'an around their neck hanging those talismans around their neck, thinking that it's the Qur'an that's protecting them. Number one, we say, in refutation against that, number one, it has not been legislated for us to wear Qur'an or that which is of the Qur'an around our necks. As we already mentioned in the first khutbah, number one, that the Qur'an was revealed in order for us to contemplate on it and to work by it, not for decoration, not to be put around your neck, and not only that, it is not the necklace that's protecting you. It's not the Qur'an that you're wearing that's protecting you. It's Allah that's protecting you. That which you read and invoke of that which is of those suwar, yes, it is a legislated reason to read it, but to have the antiqad that it comes from Allah that protects you. Not the mushaf, not the Qur'an. None of those things protect you. It's Allah, even though he legislated for you to read the Qur'an. And to what? Use it as a way to protect yourself. For that reason, also likewise, the Prophet said, whoever hangs a talisman around his neck, then what? In another narration, whoever reads or hangs a talisman around his neck, then he has also committed shirk in another narration. And in another narration, it says, whoever hangs something and he has that belief about that which is of attaining some type of benefit, removing some type of harm, he will be entrusted to it. For that reason, ya ma'ashul ikhwah, these affairs are dangerous. Why? Because a lot of people will wear these matters. And what will come as a result of it, it will render you weak. Why? Because when a person, when it becomes well, or devoted to this thing, or well engrossed in using this thing constantly, what will come as a result of it, it we will become attached to it. And when it's time to remove it from them, or remove from the person that type of harm, he, was, he will act as if death has come to him. Or as if now he's not been protected. Oh, I'm feeling my sickness starting to come back to me now. That is because this thing rendered you weak. And it was incumbent upon you to tie your heart with Allah ta'ala. And not to tie to something he created, nor did he legislate as a way to protect yourself. For that reason, yeah, we say, ya ma'ashul ikhwah. For that which is of, we said before, and I, will, and I also will reiterate it and say, number one, that which you see people do out of ignorance, that they will look to that which is of, wearing those type of necklaces, to protect one from the ayn or the jinn. The Prophet ﷺ had made war with these type of affairs. And that which he had sent to the hadith of that which is of, Abu Bashir al-Ansari, where the Prophet ﷺ has sent a messenger, and he said, وَأَرْسَلَ رَسُولًا أَلَّا يَبْقَيَنَّ فِي بَعِيرٍ فِي رَقَبَةِ بَعِيرٍ قِلَادَةٌ مِنْ وَتَرْ that the Prophet وسلم, when people used to wear those attachments or attach around their animals, and they used to what and put those hang those type of things or different various type of things on their on their car, if you want to say on their riding piece, and in these days and times, that which is of our cars, that when they used to hang those things around them in order to protect them from the ain or the jinn. That which the Prophet وسلم, sent the messenger, and he said not to let anything of these affairs hang in those animals, nor any type of attachment or necklace except it was commanded to be removed. So we say to that which is of the brothers and to the sisters, we tell them and also clarify the affairs of Tawheed of Allah, of Tabarakah wa Ta'ala, 
because this has been widespread amongst the Muslims. And like we said, it is the most harmful and destructive sin that one can fall into. Wearing those talismans, wearing those rings that you think, like we said before, if you think that it brings you good luck, or likewise, it removes some type of harm, like the jinn won't affect me, or the unseen devils won't help, won't harm me if I wear this. Or if you believe that any of these affairs, wearing this, this good necklace that my grandmother used to wear, and I'm wearing it because it brought her good luck in her life. All of these are affairs of what they call shirkiyat. Shirkiyat and polytheism with Allah, where it's incumbent upon you to stay far away from it, if this is the intent of wearing it. Even though we do not say it's not permissible to wear rings, but if this is your intent of wearing it, then it's incumbent upon you to stay far away from you, far away from it. Because if you die, you have this antiquat, you have this belief, and you die in this state. Notice the Prophet ﷺ has said, "Ma aflahta abadan." You will never be prosperous if you die in that state. For anything of that which is of what people are hanging in their doorways, of that which is of those rabbit's foots. And what's also coming now, shirkmas, of that which is of Christmas, which is filled with a bunch of shirk with Allah. Starting from the Santa Claus to the belief of the mistletoe to the Christmas tree. If you look to the orange origins of it, all of it is polytheism. And it's all of that which the people polytheists used to practice. Hanging up a rabbit's foot, hanging up of that which is of the mistletoe, hanging up of that which is of putting something of a rabbit's tail on your door to ward off evil. All of it is polytheism. Stay far away from it. All of it are believing that. I'm aware of even this wristband because it will give me a, a better jump shot in my basketball game. Or it's going to make my game win. All of it is polytheism. If you believe that it's going to bring you some type of harm or remove some type of good, it is a satanic way of getting you to fall into that filthy sin. We ask the brothers and the sisters to ask, and we ask Allah to bring with Ta'ala to give us the fiqh in the religion. And to ward off from us all the evils of that which is of shirk and that which is of bid'ah. The last thing I also want the brothers to be aware of, and it verily saddens me to, to hear, that the likes of Shadid Muhammad has come to this city. Brothers, I am telling you that brother is not Salafi. Don't be fooled. A lot of people these days and times are coming in the cloak of Salafiyah. To confuse you. That's the new, that's the new wave of trying to confuse people now. Say, 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 shaitan now comes in different forms. Likewise, the people of deviants come in different forms and colors. Some are more frank and distinct than others. From them, they will come and say to you, I'm Salafi. I'm called to Tawheed. I call to shir I call to warn against shirk. And if you look to his actions and listen to it truly, it is not being applied. Talks general information without the details. For the Ma'ashul Ikhwa, stay on guard against those who call these, also likewise, these people to their masajid. They are not going to increase you a sect in ignorance. Trust me. Any community, that individual Chidi went to. He left no good upon the community as far as being educated. Go to his mess in South Philadelphia, they are all still ignorant. Ignorant. What is the effect of seeing what Ahl al Nothing, Ya Ma'ashul Ikhwa, except that you're going to find that your heart leaning towards him and defending him. That's it. For that reason, I say, and I'll say it again be on guard against these people that go to the people of Masajah Ahl al and also likewise try to call the Salafis the same with Salafi, and still at the end of the day, still sitting with that which is a fair con, and not clarifying, clarifying his dalala in the lectures, acting as if we're all saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, even though his interpretation, La ilaha illallah, and mine's is totally different. Not clarifying the dalala that he's upon, but showing as if as we're one epic happy family. Wrong! For that, what I say, Ya Ma'ashul Ikhwa, I ask Allah to protect all of our Salafi brothers and sisters from the evils of this new wave of people now have coming to cause more confusion and to cause more dissension amongst Ahl al Haq. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa subhanakallahu wa bihamdak wa shalu la ilaha ila ant 
What stuff would to be like? Last day. Brothers, I warn anyone in this masjid of speaking about declaring the Muslim rulers to be kufar. This is a number one warning. If I hear anyone in this masjid speaking ill about the Muslim rulers, or speaking ill and speaking about that which is of declaring the Muslim rulers to be kufar, I'm going, we, we are going to inform the authorities to inform the FBI, and I'm going to put, also prohibit you from coming to this masjid. You are considered a threat. Anyone who has the ideology of ISIS, know for sure this is how we're going to deal with you. I don't want to hear anyone in the masjid make a takfir on the hukab. I don't want to hear any of this nonsense. I hear any of this nonsense, this is what I'm going to do. I don't want to hear it no more. This is how you'll be dealt with. Leave that khubs, that wickedness of ISIS out there with the rest of the khubs. Because it is khubs. This is the last warning, and I do not want to hear anything about politics or anything about making takfir the hukam in his masjid. Which is Zakum al Khayr, Akim al Salah.